In painting, the techniques of application basically boil down to the following. Layering, juxtaposition, blending. When we paint, we can apply colours, one on top of the other, or side by side. Otherwise, we can merge them, that is, mixing them together. The application of pictorial material, regardless of the tool used, brush, spatula or other, can therefore take place in three distinct ways, of which the first, and for a long time almost the only one to be adopted, consists in applying the colours by overlapping layers of colour. The layers can be opaque, transparent, and also both in succession. The correct implementation of these techniques require that the surface that receives the colour is perfectly dry. The procedure is therefore part of the wet on dry techniques, which we will explore in another video. Much antique painting, as well as the painting of the early Middle Ages, appears to have been executed without gradual chromatic transitions. Layers of opaque colour were used, such as to prevent or contrast the view of the underlying surface. Applied uniformly within a space delimited by an outline. On top of these background layers, additions were made, marking particularities and reliefs by overlapping pictorial layers that were also opaque. From the 11th century, in frescoes, as well as in panels, we can see in the drapery of the figures, stimulations, although simplified, of the modelling through the adoption of the procedure. Already in use in miniatures and described in numerous treatises of the time. Known as Terne di Colore. Let's take a closer look at this method. Once the profiles of the figures were marked, the entire dress was uniformly coloured, using the base colour consisting of mixing any pigment with white, for example red ochre lightened and therefore pink. Once this first layer was dry, we continued by overlapping a brush stroke of pure colour to indicate the dark folds in the shadows, to then highlight the parts in light, thus obtaining, with only three colours, a stylized representation of the structural shape. Finally, the contours were reviewed. It is therefore a matter of shading and highlighting, carried out not by means of shades of colour, but by means of superimposition of different chromatic shades all distinguishable from each other and not mixed. Completely different is the effect obtained by the superimposition of two transparent colours, where the second is applied when the first is completely dry. The superimposition of thin layers of transparent colour is called glazing, which, if of the same shade, modifies the underlying colour by intensifying it. Otherwise, when of a different shade, it produces, by optical effect, a third colour. It is a typical process of watercolour painting, and it allows you to create a transparent and luminous material by exploiting mainly the light tone of the background. With the affirmation of oil painting, 
techniques of successive glazes of the same colour developed. The process was particularly appreciated in the treatment of dark backgrounds and shadows which, in this way, acquired depth and a glaze compactness that could not be achieved in any other way. Finally, the combination of an opaque colour and a transparent one is possible. It is very common, in this case, that on the underlying elements there is a structural shaping which the thin application of colour, rich in blender, allows a glimpse through transparency. Thin glazes superimposed on already dried mixtures have the property of modifying the tone, creating vibrant and deep colours. These are particularly beautiful when warm intonations cover neutral or, better yet, cold preparations and vice versa when cold transparent layers are spread on warm intonations. As in the case of Garanza lacquer, often used to intensify the shadows of blue coats, or on the contrary azurite for areas darker than red ones. In oil painting, in order to obtain a homogeneous application, the surface that receives the colour is first moistened with a mixture of resins and oils. However, the application can be deliberately applied in a non-uniform way and, if done carefully, while not blending the colours into each other, it can create a blending effect very similar to blending itself. The gradual transition from one colour to another can be achieved in several ways. By decreasing the thickness of pictorial material. By increasing its dilution. By reviewing the spreads locally. Or by removing part of the layer. In some cases, the effect is obtained, as we have seen, thanks to the underlying modelling that acts by transparency. Not a fusion technique, therefore, but the imposition of layers kept separate from each other. From the first half of the 20th century, many artists reproposed the techniques of super application, reducing all the pictorial elements to blocks of uniform colour or monochromatic areas, and thus excluding any reference to reality from their representation. <laughs>